Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with MachineSkills.com and today I'm going to do a tutorial on creating and using modulation tracks in Machine. Uh, if you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with a few different machine tutorials every single week. Alright, so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is give ourselves a sound or something to modulate. So I'm just going to load up an instance of Prism, which is a reactor ensemble that comes with Machine. It's one of my favorite um, synths out there. And I'm going to open up the keyboard view here. I'm just going to program in a very simple sequence for us to kind of screw around with. I'm not going to try too hard to make anything too amazing or anything. So next, let's choose a parameter to modulate. So we're just going to take any knob here and find one that we want to have change over time. And I like to use the ones in the exciter filter menu here. And these will just kind of change the timbre of our sound. So I'll just fool around with those for a second and give you an idea of what they can do. All right, so the low cut knob is basically controlling the amount of lower frequency content in our sound, and when we turn it high up, uh, then we kind of get the feel of a, of a bass string that's not being plucked properly or something. So let's create a modulator for this knob. So at the bottom of our screen, directly to the right of the library, we have this little tab here that we can open up. And there's two available views in this, and one is the MIDI track view, and you can kind of control the velocity of your incoming MIDI notes and stuff with that view. And then there's the modulation view, which we'll be using for today's tutorial. So you can create a new modulator by pressing on the little plus button and it'll show up calling itself modulator one and you can right click on it to choose a knob to control so i'm gonna choose the exciter filter menu and then choose the low cut knob and initially if you try to draw anything that's not really going to work and at the bottom of our modulation area here you'll see we have several different options for cursor types to use so if you choose the paintbrush option uh, you can draw in values for the modulation knob at that point in time, and when you press play, you'll see that the knob moves with the modulators. So by default, you probably noticed that we're only being able to set uh, the new position for the knob every 16th note, and that's because we have a little grid set down here. So we can choose something a little smaller, like 1 1 28th, and get a finer grid to draw on. And directly to the left of that, we have a little button that we can press to remove the grid altogether. And that'll give us a really fine control over our parameters, like so. Alright, so you can change the destination of a modulation track if you right click on it and select a new knob from the menu. But if you do, all the information in it is going to be deleted, so it's kind of pointless, honestly. Um, so if I choose the low res, you see I just lost all the information I had there. And you can delete a modulation track by uh, clicking on this little X right here, and it'll disappear. All right, so there's another type of modulation available to us in Machine, and I'd like to demonstrate that right now. So I'm just going to restart our little sequence here. So notice that when I hover over the little orange marker on the outside of the knob here, it kind of highlights a track around the outside of the knob. 
And whenever the sequence is playing, which it is right now, and I've just paused the video so I can talk over it, you can click on the uh, track on the outside of the knob and draw in a new modulation, and it will add that track to the bottom, as you can see has already happened at the bottom of our screen. All right, so the way that this works can be really confusing at first. I definitely accidentally created modulation tracks for several parameters without knowing how I had done it or um, how to replicate the process, because I was like, oh, that's cool, but I couldn't figure out how to do it again. Um, and the in information is a little dispersed around the manual as well. so can be a little confusing, but um, I actually like this method of modulation a lot more than the first one we were going over because you can do it so quickly and just create these really dynamic um, loops very easily, and it's just a, a pretty cool setup. All right, so those are the two kind of built-in modulation methods that we can use in Machine. I also just wanted to show another type of modulation we can do uh, using the sampler. And so all the kits that come with machine pretty much work this way, so I figure it's a, a good enough example. I'm just going to use the kick drum um, to demonstrate. Okay, so the sampler device has two pages that are devoted to modulation options. We have the modulation page, which uh, controls the modulation envelope. So we have an envelope in here with four possible destinations. And the drive destination is pretty cool. So how the modulation envelope works is that it triggers on every new note. And the way it's set up by default with the hold turned all the way up and the attack turned all the way down, it's kind of boring because it'll just, uh, it doesn't really modulate over time so much as it does just stay in one point. So I'm going to turn the hold down and turn the attack up. And this way we're going to get an envelope that kind of goes upwards and then falls back down with the decay time. And we'll see how that sounds on the drive. And I'm not going to take too long to tune it, but if you take a little time with it, you can almost get kind of like a, a wobble bass sound out of the kick drums by modulating the drive on certain ones anyway. It can be pretty cool. And the LFO works similarly. We have uh, four different destinations we can send it to. So I'll just use pitch as an example. We can change the pitch of the kick drum over time. So just adding a little bit of simple modulation can make your loop sound a lot more dynamic and create a lot of character as well. All right, uh, this is Salamander Anagram with MachineSkills.com. Uh, I hope if you like this tutorial, you'll check out our website and tune in again next week.